everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel, Relax Cut Glue. If you're new here, welcome. So happy to have you here today. So I'm gonna show you how I made my paper bag glue book for my one glue book challenge. And then I'm gonna show you guys a flip through of it later. So let's start with what you're going to need for your paper bag glue book or journal, whatever you want it to make it. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need is a brown paper bag. This one is a Dollar Tree bag, if that helps you. I know that a lot of us go to the Dollar Tree, so I thought using one that's universal that a lot of us have would help. This is 12 inches wide. So this is the one I'm going to be using today. You will need paper. I'm using colored printer paper. And all you do is fold your paper in half, crease it, and repeat for all your other papers. You will need an awl. This is what's gonna help you poke through your pages. If you don't have an awl, you can use anything that is sharp that you could poke a hole through. I mean, even a pencil you could probably use, but an awl works very well. They're very cheap. You can find them even at Walmart. You will need some binder clips. These will be used to hold our papers in place. If you don't have binder clips, you can use paper clips. You will need some type of string. I like to use embroidery floss. This was purchased at the Dollar Tree. I got six colors for a dollar, so you're gonna need some string of any sort. It can be even fishing line if you wanted to use, um, but embroidery floss is inexpensive. Um, it's sturdy and for glue booking and journaling, it's always worked for me. And then you are going to need a needle. I have a book binding needle that I use. Um, it's just a fatter needle and it has a bigger eye. So you'll need that. And, and then you'll need a book or a block of wood or something that you can use to poke the holes into your pages with that won't put a hole in your table. I have an old book and I always stick like bits of packaging or whatever in here to make it sturdy so I don't poke a hole into my table. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is get out my trimmer. I forgot to tell you, you're gonna need a trimmer. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to use a trimmer. I just like to because I like really straight lines. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off uh, the raggedy edges on the top. This isn't a must, but I like to because those are torn and gross and I don't want that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is slip this through and I am going to go to eight and three quarters. Let me make sure I did that on this one. I, I'm pretty sure I almost always go eight. Yeah, I did, okay. I'm going eight and three quarters, and that's because my paper is eight and a half inches high. I like to leave a little space between the top and the bottom, but if you want it to be exactly flush with the top, you'll make this eight and a half inches. But I'm making mine eight and three quarters. So I'm just gonna go right across and you can save this for another project, but this is all you're gonna need. Now comes the easy part. Now the bag I used before did not have the Dollar Tree logo on it, so I didn't have to worry about this, um, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna actually make this the outside because I always decorate the outside, but so I'm gonna turn this over. Okay, so what you have now is a basis of your journal. It's 12 and 12 inches wide by eight and three quarters high. What I'm gonna do now is because this is open right here, I'm going to take my glue right along these edges here and seal this shut. This is the bottom of the journal or glue book, whatever you want it to be. And I'm gonna add a little bit of glue there as well as these little flaps right here because I want the whole thing to be glued together. So now I'm just gonna take my bone folder and press along those lines, just making sure that that glue is really smushed in there and adhered. And now the bottom is closed, so I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing. So I just open it up and just very lightly along the edges here, I'm adding some glue, missed right there. 
and then on this little flap up here, just on the top part so that this whole thing stays closed. See that? So then you push it down, use your bone folder like so. All right, so now you have the top is closed and the bottom is closed. So now let's seal our pockets. So what we're gonna do is just put a little thin dollop of glue right along this edge right here. See how I open this up? And that's gonna be our pocket. So we will just put a thin strip of glue right here and a thin strip of glue right here. Fold that down, give it a little smush smush, get that, make sure that glue gets really adhered there so that your pocket is sturdy. So now you have a pocket. Okay, let's do the other side now. So I'll just turn this over and we'll do the same thing. Right here and right here. You wanna be really careful not to go too far in because the further you go in, the less room you have in your pocket. So if you stay really close to the edge, that means you have more pocket space. So we'll smush that down. All right. Oops. Ah, <laughs> uh, of course, because I'm on camera. That's how it always works, okay. Clearly, A, I didn't add enough glue, and B, I opened it too early. So we'll just let that sit. Okay, so now we have pocket one, pocket two. This is completely sealed shut, and this is completely sealed shut. So now all you do is fold it in half. Crease it, give it a nice crease. This is your foundation, so you wanna really take your time. Even though this is a very simple project, you wanna take your time so that it, you know, simple doesn't mean you have to skimp on things. So there we go, you guys. That is that is the basis of your glue book. So there's my pocket, and there's my pocket. I have, there is this little flap right here, and I will admit, I did glue this down. It's not necessary, especially since this will be on the back anyways, but, I mean, why risk having that get caught or something? You know what I mean? Okay, so now we have our cover done. So I like to add my signatures in before I decorate. Um, you could decorate first. On this one, I actually decorated first and then did my signatures. So it's up to you. If you want your string to show, do your cover first, and, and uh, if you don't want your string to show, then do your cover last. But for these purposes, I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, so we have all of our papers now folded in half. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, nine, ten. I have ten. Okay, and this is just colored um, copy paper. This is nothing fancy. And you just take your papers that you've folded and put one inside of the other. You can, you know, distribute them however you would like. I'm just kind of willy nilly here. This, this white one's cool. It has little specks of all the colors inside of it. I like that. Okay. And then we'll end with blue. I'm gonna put red in the front. Okay, so now all of our papers are together. You wanna, I like to hold my papers like this, put my fingers right here in the ditch or the gutter, <laughs> and just kind of really push down like this. That makes sure that all my papers are really flush together. See, they can't get any closer together. Okay, so now that I know all my papers are together, now you can see how these are sticking out like this. They stick out because you're putting the same size paper inside of each other. And because it's, you know, there's 10 pages, it pushes them out a little bit. I don't mind having my pages like this because honestly, when you start gluing, all your pages kind of get, 
you know, kind of stick out or whatever. And this doesn't bother me. Um, if it bothers you, you can cut this off right here to make it flush with the red page. It doesn't bother me at all. Okay, so again, I'm gonna really make sure that these are nice and tight. I'm gonna open up my flap here and I'm going to put my paper in here. And because I made this, paper is eight and a half inches tall and my glue book is eight and three quarters inches tall. I have a quarter of an inch of extra space. So I just kind of line that up. I have about an eighth of an inch on each side. So this is good for me. So I'm just gonna really make sure that, um, I'm gonna grab that paper in there now. Make sure this is even, so you know I'm not even anymore. There we go, push that paper down. Okay, you don't have to be as exact as I am, I just have OCD. Okay, so this is where your clamps come in handy. So I have my paper right where I want it, so I'm gonna be very gentle and not move it. And I'm going to put, a clamp there and on this side make sure those are closed kind of get that in there again turn this around and we're gonna clamp the same sides on the other side okay so now you have this we'll just kind of really make sure that yeah it's perfect it's in there okay so now you take your little any kind of book or anything like that. Okay, so now you take your all, and it's kind of hard to see because I keep my book pinched kind of open like this, but I'm going to poke a hole in the middle and I'm just eyeballing it. And then one about an inch, inch and a quarter from the top and from the bottom. So because I wanna make sure my paper's staying all together, I just right in the middle there, I just eyeball it. You can measure if you want. It's not necessary, but you totally can. I actually am pretty good at eyeballing. I just kind of naturally have that, I guess, talent. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so now I poked my three holes in there. And if you already know how to do a pamphlet stitch, then you can skip this part, but I'll go over the three hole pamphlet stitch one more time. So as a basic rule, you wanna take your string and however long your book is, you wanna times that by three. So here's one, two, three, and that should be enough length of thread for you. For me, I have always found that it usually ends up being more than enough, um, which I like because, I mean, it's easier to tie the knots, right? Okay, so next we will thread the needle. And this is how I three hole pamphlet stitch. There's lots of different ways, none of them are wrong. You do however you have learned. So I go in through the middle, so I just poke my needle through. And you're gonna leave a tail here. This is what's gonna help you tie in the end. So sometimes I just kind of tuck that under there. It'll come loose, but it's okay. Okay, so then I turn my journal over and I'm gonna go down through the bottom hole. Let's see if I can't, let's see. Sorry, you go down through the bottom hole. It should come up right, why is my needle not, oh it is. <laughs> I couldn't see it because of the blue paper. This probably wasn't a good one. Okay, up through the bottom hole. Kind of pull that taunt. Make sure you still have enough string here. Go in through the top. And it helps if this is closed a little bit because um, that's how you poked the hole. So it helps the needle to go straight through if you. Okay, so then you put it through. So it's gonna come out through the top here. Wanna make sure, see my, I almost pulled it all the way through. So you wanna be really careful to leave this. There we go. Okay. Then you're gonna go back through your middle hole, but you wanna be really careful not to go through the string, the strings, you wanna be really careful. And then you're gonna pull through. So my string is, there we go. Okay, now you really wanna make sure both of my strings are on this, on the right side of this string. That's a no-no. So I just take my needle and kind of just bring it up under. 
So now I have a piece of string that's on either side of the middle. And now you just kind of want to very lightly, lightly but firmly. Does that make sense? If you pull too hard, you're going to rip your holes in your book. So you just kind of pull it taut, make sure that the string is tight, flip it over, look. Um, it's pretty loose right here, so I think I need to pull it just a little bit tighter. There we go. Okay, and then you just knot it. Simple as can be. Like that. I always do three. I don't know why. Um, I kind of like to work in threes. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I have more than enough string here. Now this allows you to leave some dangles if you want. You can add charms down here or whatever you'd like. I don't like to do that. I just cut mine short and glue over it. So that's how you do this. You take these little bad boys off, your little friends. And there you go. Now you can decorate the top, or the top, the front and the back. And then you have your pocket here and you have a pocket here. And honestly, if you wanted to, you could leave one of these, like the top or the back open here. Um, we did glue this shut, but you could make a pocket out of the top too. I just feel like it's a lot sturdier when you glue the pages together like I did. So yeah, here we go, here it is, it's so easy. And man, these pockets in here are pretty big. I mean, look, my, they're deep. Actually, let's measure, because I'm curious. I would guess about three inches, let's see. Ooh, three, almost three and a half inches deep. So my ruler went about that far in, actually about that far. So that's, that's a thick pocket, that boy thick. Okay, so look how easy that was, guys. Super simple. Here's a little trick. If you don't want to do this pamphlet stitch, say you don't have the stuff, it just feels very intimidating to you, you don't want to do it, you don't have to. What you can do is take some embroidery floss or some stretchy string, take your paper, put it the string around, bring it up here, tie a little knot, right here on the spine. Let's see, right up here. Tie a little knot right up here. And now you have this binding right here, right? If it's stretchy, it'll stretch. If it's tight, it'll be tight, right? So you have this. Then you can slide your papers out and then put them back in whenever you want. And this is a, a way of keeping your papers in here without having to stitch them in. You literally just take some thread or stretchy string or yarn or ribbon and tie it so you have one tie right here and then you can slip your papers in and take them back out that way you don't have to actually stitch it in so that's a really easy way to do it too so there we go look look how different it looks when it doesn't have like stuff in it and everything <laughs> yeah and then you can put you know you can make a pocket in here if you want so many options right there you go, guys. That's how you make a paper bag glue book. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. There's no stupid questions. Please ask away. I'll be happy to answer them. Don't forget to join my Facebook group, Relax Cut Glue. The link is in the description box down below. I hope you all have a fabulous day and a fabulous weekend. And until next time, bye.